recently saw someone online ask for project recommendations because they learn best by doing. I thought I should make a video to give someone a project that they can use to learn Go. So today we're going to make this video game because everyone loves 80s era video games. And at the end of the video, I'm going to give you some homework. But first, let me say that if you're watching this video when I publish it in January of 2024, I'm looking for work. I'll put a link in the description to my LinkedIn profile. If you know of an opening that I may be a good fit for, please reach out to me. On to the video. For this project, we'll be using the excellent eBitten game engine for Go. Link in the comments. I usually avoid referencing third-party libraries in my videos, but without eBitten, we'd have to deal with window management and graphics drivers, and that's not the point of this exercise. To make a game in eBitten, you just implement the game interface and tell eBitten to run it. So here in main.go, we have that second part. eBitten run game accepts an object and runs it as a game until it errors. The game object itself is defined in game.go. The new game method creates a game object by reading the PNG images for each graphic that are embedded in the code. It then creates baddie, player, and bullet objects with settings appropriate for the start of the game. We'll go into those in detail in just a moment. To conform to eBitten's interface requirements, we have three methods that must be implemented on our game struct. The first is layout, which just returns the size of the game screen so eBitten knows what to draw. I define two constants for a fixed size screen in order to keep things simple. The next method to look at is draw. This method is called by eBitten every time the screen needs refreshed. Our code will draw the game graphics on the screen variable when it's passed in. The code starts out by filling the screen with white to make a background. Then it calls the draw method on each of the graphics that will be displayed. Let's look at how these draw methods work. Looking at player draw, it creates a draw image option structure and uses the transform method to position the graphic before calling draw image to actually draw it. The draw method for the baddie is the same, but the bullet is slightly different because sometimes the bullet is off screen, in which case drawing of the bullet is skipped. Heading back to our game structure, the final method we have to implement for eBitten is the update method. This is where all the logic controlling the game occurs. Similar to draw, we call update on each of the actors in our game. Let's start with the baddie. For baddie, the update is solely concerned with bouncing across the screen. First off, we initialize a starting position so the baddie starts somewhere logical if the game has just started. Then we move the baddie across the screen using a constant for vertical movement and a variable for horizontal movement. Then come some checks to make sure the baddie doesn't move off the screen. If the baddie is about to move off the screen, the code reverses the movement direction, resulting in the zigzag pattern. Finally, if the baddie reaches the ground, the game ends with a disappointing message. Let's look at the bullet object, which is a bit different. Similar to bullet's draw method, we skip the entire process if the bullet is currently not on the screen. If it is on the screen, we move it upwards by a constant rate. If the bullet moves off the screen, we disable it. The code then calculates the distance between the bullet and the baddie, and if they're close enough to collide, it tells the baddie to die. Jumping back to baddie.go, we see that the die method just moves the baddie back up to the starting location, as if it's a new invader. Note that this requires the bullet to hold a reference to the baddie object, which was created when the game structure initialized. Finally, the player's update method uses eBitten to check for key presses, then moves the appropriate amount if they're pressed. Then it does a quick check to prevent the player from moving off the edge of the screen. If the spacebar is pressed, the bullet is told to fire from the X and Y coordinates of the player. Jumping back to bullet.go, we see that this just sets the bullet's position and marks it active. Of course, this requires the player to have a reference to the bullet object, which is handled by new game. And that's it. That's literally all the code, 255 lines. I tried to make the game simple enough for the homework I'm about to give you. Here you go. Go to the GitHub repository linked in the comments and fork it. Install eBitten in your development environment and make some sort of improvement to the game. Since the game is so simple, I suspect that most people can think of many improvements to make, but just in case you don't have any ideas, here are some simple ones. How about keeping score? Put it on the screen somewhere. Make the starting position of each baddie random instead of it always starting in the upper left corner. Make the baddie speed up as the game goes on because most games would do that so that the game gets harder. Or maybe add a background image to add some visual interest to the whole thing. If you're up for a little more challenge, here are some more advanced tasks. Allow the player to fire more than one bullet at a time. Put more than one baddie on the screen at a time. Make the baddie move in a more interesting pattern than just the zigzag. 
Make the baddie shoot back at the player. Have the baddie explode instead of just disappearing when it's killed. Do something, literally anything more interesting when the game ends, you know, like a game end screen or something. And maybe add some sound. Post your results in the comments. I'll be interested to see what people come up with. And I hope this video gives you something fun to do while you're learning Go.